So in this video, we're going to talk very briefly about the testes and sperm production. So before we begin, just remember that there are two testes and they are around about four centimeters in length, two and a half centimeters in width and weigh around about 10 to 12 grams each. The purpose of the testes is uh, twofold. Predominantly, they are there for sperm production and they are also there for androgen production. Now, androgens are male sex hormones, for example, testosterone. So, what we're going to look at here, first of all, is I've drawn, to the best of my ability, a testy, and you can see that, well, at least I've tried to cut out a wedge from the testy to see what's happening internally in regards to internal anatomy and also some of the physiological processes that occur within the testy. So, to begin with, let's talk about some anatomy. What you can see up here above, so superior to the testes, is what we call the spermatic cord. And the spermatic cord moves from the testes up into the abdomen. So, this whole region here is the spermatic cord. And within the spermatic cord are a number of different anatomical structures. For example, There's the ductus deferens. The ductus deferens is sometimes called the vas deferens, and that is a tube that carries sperm that's produced in the testes and carries it up to the rest of the ductal system for the male reproductive tract. So that's the ductus deferens, is a tube carrying the sperm. Okay? What else is within this spermatic cord? Is the testicular artery. And the testicular artery is obviously going to be a branch of the abdominal aorta coming down and going to provide nutrients to the testes. So if there's going to be an artery that also means there's going to be a venous system, so a vein. Now the veins that come back up and out of the testes are actually a plexus, so they're like a braiding that comes out. Now it's not called the testicular artery per se, but it's called the pampiniform plexus. So remember I said plexus is like a braiding. Remember you've got the various spinal plexuses of the, the spinal nerve plexuses. And remember it's sort of going to come out like this and then it's going to look a little bit like that. and then come back. So this pampiniform plexus, so remember you're going to have the aorta, sorry, the branch of the abdominal aorta, which is the testicular artery coming down, providing warm, nutrient-rich blood to the testes. And then you've got this pampiniform plexus coming up right next door to it. Now the reason why we have this pampiniform plexus is because this venous supply cools the arterial blood coming down. Why do we want to cool this blood? Well, testes, when it comes to sperm production, the ideal temperature for sperm production is around about two to three degrees lower than internal body temperature, which means the ideal temperature has to be two to three degrees lower than the blood that's coming in to feed it. So this blood's going to be too warm for the testes. And so this venous supply cools it down. That's another reason why the testes are found exterior to the body. Okay? All right. What else can we find? Well, we can find the testicular nerve. And we can also find the cremaster muscle. Now the cremaster muscle is a muscle that comes down through the spermatic cord and what does it do? Well, when it's relaxed, the testes drop. When it contracts, the testes lift up. Again, this has to do with temperature regulation. So when the body is hot or when the temperature is hot, again, testes need to be two to three degrees cooler than the internal body temperature. So the cremaster muscle relaxes and the testes drop. If it's cold, well, the testes need to be warmer contracts, lifts the testes up.
Now, this is the spermatic cord. You've got a couple of different layers surrounding the testes, which we won't really go through, but it's important that you know that there is a muscular layer surrounding the testes, and that muscle is called the datos muscle. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is the datos muscle plays another important role in temperature regulation of the testes. So when it is cold, the datos muscles contract and wrinkles up the scrotum. When it is warm, the datos muscles relax and the scrotum becomes less wrinkly and again has to do with temperature regulation. When it's cold and wrinkles up, well that means that it holds on to the temperature and vice versa when the temperature increases. So what are the two muscles involved in temperature regulation for the testes? The cremaster muscles, which raise and lower the testes, and the datos muscles, which change the scrotum in regards to wrinkly or less wrinkly. Okay, now let's talk about sperm production. Now, what you can find here is, I told you that you've got that ductus deferens, which is in the spermatic cord, and that ductus deferens is attached here. And what we're gonna find is that this ductus deferens is attached to the epididymis. Now the epididymis, which you can find this part that I'm colouring in here, is where sperm is stored and further matures. Okay? The epididymis, which I'm colouring in here, is where sperm is stored and also further matures. Now, there are some ducts or branches of this that go into the testes. And these branches further branch off into individual lobes of the testes. So you can see I've drawn individual lobes here. There's actually around about 200 to 250 lobes within the testes. And these lobes turn into smaller tubules and this is where sperm is produced. These tubules are called seminiferous tubules. Now again, let's label a couple of things. First of all, we've got the epididymis, where sperm is stored and matures. And here we've got seminiferous tubules and this is where sperm is produced. And therefore, sperm being produced in these seminiferous tubules travels through these ducts into the epididymis and then up into the ductus deferens. Now, what I want to do for the rest of this video is focus on what's happening right here in regards to sperm production. So if I were to take one of these seminiferous tubules and have a look, that's going to be inside of that tubule. Actually, I'll draw a little bit smaller. So that's inside the seminiferous tubule, and this is the wall of the seminiferous tubule. And then you're going to have all the area outside of the seminiferous tubule. Now, what you're going to find is that there's a number of different cell types that you need to be aware of. First of all, you've got cells present around here in the walls of the seminiferous tubules. These cells are called sustentacular cells. Isn't that a good name? Sustentacular. Sustentacular cells. 
which we also call Sertoli cells, Sertoli. Okay, what's the importance of Sertoli cells? They produce a very important hormone called ABP, and we'll talk about that in a sec. ABP, androgen binding protein. In addition to that, there are cells that sit outside of the seminiferous tubular walls, so in the interstitium, and therefore these cells are called interstitial cells. So these cells are called interstitial cells. But again, they have another name, and they're called Leydig cells. And what do Leydig cells do? Well, Leydig cells produce testosterone. Okay, what else do we have? We have stem cells in the walls of these seminiferous tubules. Sperm stem cells. So these can obviously turn into sperm. So how does this process occur? Okay, well, once a male has reached puberty, remember if we look at the brain, you have cerebellum, uh, cerebrum, cerebellum, uh, midbrain, pons, medulla, so forth, and that right here, you've got your hypothalamus, and you've got two danglies here, which aren't the testes, but is the anterior and posterior pituitary glands. Remember that the hypothalamus and the anterior pituitary gland is very important when it comes to sperm production. So if we were to draw the hypothalamus up here, here's the hypothalamus. Let's say that this one on this side is the anterior pituitary gland. Well remember, similar to when we spoke about the female reproductive cycle, you have gonadotropin releasing hormone which is released by the hypothalamus, travels down through the blood supply to the anterior pituitary gland and tells the anterior pituitary gland to release two hormones called gonadotropins. Remember these hormones are follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Now, what happens here is that these two hormones, when a male reaches puberty is that they travel to the seminiferous tubules. And if we have a quick look, what you'll find is that the follicle stimulating hormone travels to the Sertoli cells and stimulates Sertoli cells. Luteinizing hormone travels to the Leydig cells and stimulates the Leydig cells. Which means what happens when a male hits puberty is that the sustentacular cells or the Sertoli cells produce ABP. So now ABP is released in here. Into the walls of the seminiferous tubules. And luteinizing hormone stimulates the Leydig cells outside here in the interstitium to produce testosterone. And this testosterone moves in as well. Together, these two hormones stimulate these stem cells. The name of these stem cells is spermatogonia. Okay? Spermatogonia or spermatogonium. And together, ABP and testosterone stimulate these cells to start producing sperm. And so this sperm is, and what happens is as this sperm is produced, it starts to move towards the lumen or the hollow inside of the tube. So the hollow inside of that tube. And as this sperm is being produced and starts to mature a little bit more, it then gets into the tubule. And what do we find? We now have sperm within our seminiferous tubules. And what did I say happened to those sperm? They travel into the 
epididymis, where they further matured and they are stored, and then when it's time for ejaculation, they'll move up to the ductus deferens. So, just to summarise, this particular part here. Follicle stimulating hormone stimulated Sertoli cells and the Sertoli cells released ABP. Luteinizing hormone stimulated the Leydig cells and they released testosterone. Together, these stimulated spermatogenesis, which is sperm production. So if you have any questions, pop me an email. I hope that made sense.